area here at 4820. You broke it for one day, so a little bit of a false break, pulled back to close to this trend line, and now we've broken north of it again and fairly convincingly on Friday. So that's why I think we're going to see uh, quite a technical surge uh, next week. Uh, so we want to really position ourselves in some of the larger stocks as well. Now the uh, materials index uh, has not quite formed a new high um, or a new medium term high. It has been higher than that, got up to over 17,000 back here in May of 08. Um, but I think it won't be very far away from breaking into a new high. And again, we'll see an acceleration here and that'll be largely with BHP contributing to that. Now the banks are in a very similar position, the index is tucked up under this, uh, this little resistance area through here. Uh, now I would, uh, I would expect the banks to probably break higher, uh, although they are, as you can see, uh, more oversold than the materials index. And finally the um, the small ordinaries index, the XSO, so this level here on the 19th of January was the all-time high. Uh, no, it wasn't. I beg your pardon. It was the all-time high for the uh, for the current period. And it looks like we're going to break. Uh, we're going to break above that. I, I would expect that to occur on Monday. So I think you're going to see some very positive sentiment pretty much across the board. So they're the uh, they're the key charts to have a look at. Um, let's have a look at uh, some of the other. Significant ones, and that's uh, around copper. And uh, here's the um, the London Metals Exchange inventory levels. You can see a substantial decline from 560,000 tons got down to about 350. Uh, spiked back up to about 400,000 tons, but it's just starting to tail off again now. So um, that's been extremely positive for the copper price, and you can see here that the copper price uh, continues to head on up. Very strong, it's quite a, a strong trend there. Uh, nickel, uh, the inventory levels didn't go uh, to quite the same depths that copper did, but certainly the price is uh, back up into an uptrend and, and breaking into a new medium term high on nickel as well. So very positive for base metals. So the opportunities this week uh, in terms of uh, short term strategy, um, I'm Comfortable ramping up exposure, but um, I'm also looking to um, to uh, reduce our exposure very quickly if the market indicates that, uh, that that's necessary. So I think we go in with a um, uh, with a focus on on trending trades predominantly, uh, but if we do need to pull back, then just be prepared to exit those um, basically on a on an exposure reduction strategy. Uh, small cap trades, uh, we want to focus on buying dips as much as we can. There are breakouts galore. Um, I could probably have 100 charts on my active watch list at the moment, but uh, we've just got to zero in on the best ones that we can find. So try to focus on buying dips on some of the better quality stocks. And uh, I'd suggest keeping capture trades to one third or less of your total trades, just uh, in case we do get some short term volatility. Um, that avoids you getting stocked out of a whole bunch of stocks where you've got your, uh, your exit quite close. And on the large cap trades, um, I think we really should be looking for opportunities. We don't want to chase prices, but we really want to be looking for opportunities to raise exposure to resource stocks uh, because I think they're going to be the major beneficiary of this, uh, this breakout. Uh, this particular circumstances around BHP and Rio at the moment is a real... Um, institutional clamour for BHP and Rio to increase their uh, dividends, to look at share buybacks, special dividends, uh, all those sort of things. They're all uh, very uh, positive for the share price. And I think there'll be a time where, um, now that we've got global exposure, uh, the global recovery ex uh, coming back as well as it is, uh, I think there'll now be a, perhaps a move to re-rate uh, BHP and Rio uh, and some of these other resources stocks to a, a higher PE ratio which, which could push the price up 20 or 25 percent on its own just uh, just for that. So let's just take a look at um, 
at a couple more charts. So we'll look at BHP. So let's pan back and get a bigger perspective on BHP. So we've got some all-time highs up here at $50, which I think is where we're definitely headed for. Um, we had a, a big run-up from the lows in November of 08, peaked out in April of 2010. Uh, we came back, formed a fairly extended consolidation period in BHP that lasted through till about August and then in August basically it started moving up from around $37. Again consolidated in this area through here. We had one little false break so that really ties up pretty well with what we saw on the ASX 200. So we've got this consolidation zone through here and now we've broken clear over the last two days. So I really think BHP now closed 46.67. It's possible short term we could get a little pullback to retest this zone, but um, with the US positive on Friday night and, po and commodities positive Friday night, I really don't think it's going to happen. So um, BHP, if you can get in somewhere around about the closing price from Friday on Monday morning, I think that would be um, uh, a good move to take. Price of Rio not quite so buoyant. It's still basically sitting. It's a sim very similar kind of pattern, but uh, whereas BHP had broken out, um, Rio is still sitting down within its range. So I think there's also an opportunity, maybe, to pick up some uh, some Rio shares uh, as well. Although there is a dynamic between these two companies that I don't fully have my head around yet, where um, institutional traders are, are selling one and buying the other and then reversing position. So just because uh, Rio is lagging for the minute doesn't mean it's going to play catch up immediately, but, but probably will. The next chart I wanted to have a look at was um, EQN, which is Equinox Minerals, and um, they've basically broken out of this consolidation range. You can see this is the all-time high up here uh, on a closing basis of $6.85, I think it is. And you can see a lot more volume has started coming into the stock in the last uh, couple of months. We had this consolidation phase underneath resistance. Uh, we broke through the first resistance level, ran up to the second one, almost to the cent on uh, Friday, and now we've pulled back uh, a little bit. So we may come back down and test the $6.50 area, but uh, looking at the fundamentals and the, and the charts around EQN, um, it's a stock that I've very, very keen on for um, the medium term and also for investors. Now the final trade that you might want to consider and um, and make sure that you uh, keep your risk sensible on this uh, is um, the S&P 500. You can see that uh, we've had this massive run up. We've had a lengthy consolidation throughout 2010. We started moving again when Benenke opened his mouth. And, uh, and basically now it's broken above this resistance level of 1300. To me, I can't see much until we get to 1400 or possibly even 1450. So it's, it's entirely possible that we could get quite a sharp rally up from here. And you can see Thursday, the market tried to trade down, traded down under 1300 and it finished on its highs. Uh, Friday, similarly, Tried to uh, try to, to close down below 1300, couldn't hold it, and ended up closing back on the highs at 1310. So uh, to me, whichever way I look at the price action at the moment, it's uh, it's looking incredibly positive. Uh, the only word of caution I've got is that the S&P is now um, almost as far above the 50-day moving average as it normally gets, and that's why I was expecting a correction. But we only got this one day down, so. Um, that's why I'm still just a little cautious. Don't really want to move to 100% investment at the moment. But uh, possibly an index trade on the S&P, which would be my preference, uh, because it's just proven to be a more reliable trend than the ASX 200. And if you're uh, if you're going to take a trade on the S&P, then you'd, you'd want to be running uh, at least a 20 point exit on um, on that index trade. 
because we're really looking for something like uh, 50 to 100 points, perhaps over the next uh, few weeks or even a couple of months. So uh, that's it. I think uh, Monday will be very positive again. So looking forward to a great period. Um, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you again soon. Cheers.